James had not been out to push coaches or freight cars in the yard for several days. He was feeling miserable. Oh dear, he thought, I wonder how long I shall have to stay in the shed. Will anyone see my red coat again? Why did I go so fast that I made a hole in one of my coaches that had to be mended with, of all things, a passenger's bootlace? At last, Sir Topham Hatt arrived. I know you are sorry, James, he said, and I know too that you want to be a useful engine. People are laughing at my railway, and I do not like that at all. I will try hard to do my best, said James. That's a good engine. There's nothing like determination. I want you to pull some freight cars for me. James was delighted and puffed away. Here is your freight train, James, said Thomas. Have you got some bootlaces ready? And he ran off laughing. Oh, oh, said the freight cars. We want a proper engine, not a red monster. James took no notice and started as soon as the conductor was ready. Come along, come along, he puffed. We won't, we won't, scream the freight cars. But James didn't care, and he pulled the screeching cars sternly out of the station. The cars tried hard to make him give up, but he still kept on. Sometimes their brakes would slip on, and sometimes their axles would run hot, and each time the trouble had to be put right. And each time James would start again, determined not to let them beat him. Give up, give up, you can't pull us, you can't, you can't call the cars. I can and I will, I can and I will, Puff James, but slowly but surely he pulled them along the line. At last they saw Gordon's Hill. Look out for trouble, James, warned his driver. We'll go fast and get them up before they know it. Don't let them stop you. So James went faster and soon they were halfway up. I'm doing it, I'm doing it, he panted. Will the top never come? Then, with a sudden jerk, it all came easier. I've done it, I've done it, he puffed. Hooray, it's easy now. But his driver shut off steam. They've done it again. We've left our tail behind. Look, the last cars were running backwards down the hill. The coupling had snapped, but the conductor stopped the cars and got out to warn approaching engines. That's why it was easy, said James, as he backed the other cars carefully down. What silly things freight cars are. There might have been an accident. Shall I help you, James, called Edward. Uh, no, thank you, answered James. I'll pull them myself. Good. Don't let them beat you. You're doing well, whistled Edward, as James slowly struggled up the hill. I can do it, I can do it, he puffed. He pulled and puffed as hard as he could. I've done it, I've done it, he panted. reached their station safely and James was resting in the yard when Edward pulled up. Peep, peep, he whistled. Then James saw Sir Topham Hatt. Oh dear, what will he say, he asked himself. 
But Sir Topham Hatt was smiling. I was in Edward's train and I saw everything, he said. You've made the most troublesome train on the line behave. After that, you deserve to keep your red coat. Thomas was waiting at a junction when a bus arrived. Hello, said Thomas. Who are you? I'm Bertie. Who are you? I'm Thomas. I run this branch line. So you're Thomas. Ah, oh, I remember now. You got stuck in the snow. I took your passengers and Terence the tractor pulled you out. I've come to help you with your passengers today. Help me, said Thomas. I can go faster than you. You can't, said Bertie. I can, huffed Thomas. I'll race you, said Bertie. Their drivers agreed to the race going ahead. The station master said, are you ready? Go! Thomas never could go fast at first, and Bertie drew in front. Why don't you go fast? Why don't you go fast? Called Annie and Clarabelle. Wait and see, wait and see, hissed Thomas. He's a long way ahead, they wailed. But Thomas didn't mind. He'd remembered the level crossing. There was Bertie fuming at the gates while they sailed gaily through. Goodbye, Bertie, called Thomas. After that, the road left the railway so they couldn't see Bertie. Then they had to stop at the station to let off passengers. Beep, beep. Quickly, please called Thomas, and off they went again. Come along, come along, sang Thomas. We're coming along, we're coming along, sang Annie and Clarabelle. Hurry, 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 panted Thomas. Then he looked ahead. There was Bertie tooting triumphantly on his horn. Oh, dearie me, oh, dearie me, groaned Thomas. Steady, Thomas, said his driver. We'll beat Bertie yet. We'll beat Bertie yet. We'll beat Bertie yet, echoed Annie and Clarabelle. We'll do it. We'll do it, panted Thomas. Oh, bother. There's a station. Then he heard Bertie. Goodbye, Thomas. You must be tired. Sorry I can't stop. We buses have to work, you know. Goodbye. Oh, dear, thought Thomas. We've lost. But he felt better after a drink. The signal dropped. Hurrah, we're off! Hurrah, we're off! Puffed Thomas. As they crossed the bridge, they heard an impatient honk, honk. There was Bertie waiting at the traffic lights. He started with a roar and chased on after Thomas again. Now Thomas reached his full speed. Bertie tried hard, but Thomas was too fast. Whistling triumphantly, he plunged into the tunnel, leaving Bertie toiling far behind. We've done it! We've done it! panted Thomas. We've done it! Hooray! We've done it! Hooray! chanted Annie and Clarabelle as they whooshed into the last station. Everyone was there to celebrate Thomas's victory, but they gave Bertie a big welcome too. Well done, Thomas, said Bertie. That was fun, but to beat you over that hill, I should have to grow wings and be an airplane. They now keep each other very busy. They often talk about their race, but Bertie's passengers don't like being bounced like peas in a frying pan. And Sir Topham Hatt has warned Thomas not to race at dangerous speeds. So although, between you and me, they would like to have another race, I don't think they ever will. Do you?